Hi, welcome to my channel, Pack Explains Physics. Today, we are going to learn about linear motion. So what is actually linear motion? Linear motion is a one-dimensional motion in a straight line. Here, there is a bird soaring across the sky. It has a displacement. It has velocity. Its speed increases from slow to fast. So, it also has an acceleration. Displacement, velocity, and acceleration, these three terms are the terms in the linear motion. One day, Winston's family wants to go to the museum. And here is the city map. This is Winston's house. And here is the museum. Winston's family uses a car and travel along the road to reach the museum. And the road you along the road is called the distance. Distance is the total path taken along the road. If Winston has a helicopter, he can go directly from his house to the museum across a straight line. Winston's house is the initial point, the museum is the final point. The shortest distance between initial and final point is called the displacement. Displacement is the shortest distance between initial and final point. And here comes a new term, average speed. Average speed is the total distance divided by total time taken. And average velocity, average velocity is the total displacement divided by the total time taken. The difference between average speed and average velocity is average speed uses the longer path which is the distance whereas the average velocity uses the shortest distance between initial and final point which is the displacement. Average velocity, instantaneous velocity, and uniform velocity. What are their differences? Average velocity is the total displacement divided by total time taken. The formula is S2 minus S1 over T2 minus T1, or delta S over delta T. So average velocity will consider a certain time period. It has two points of time, from time 1 to time 2. Okay? Or, it will consider a displacement from two locations, from S1 to S2. Okay, like the example just now, uh, about the Vincent's family, we can calculate the average velocity for the whole journey, for the Vincent's family to travel from his house to the museum. Okay? We can calculate the average velocity for the whole journey for a certain period of time. Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the velocity that occurred at a specific time or velocity at specific location. So we can say velocity at certain time t or velocity at certain location point A. For example, like when you're driving the car, you see the speedometer on the dashboard. And the speedometer reading shows the instantaneous velocity or instantaneous speed. Okay? The velocity at certain point of time. Okay? The reading of the speedometer shows the instantaneous speed at any point of time. The formula of instantaneous velocity is ds over dt. We can get instantaneous velocity from the gradient at certain point of a displacement time graph. So the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity is average velocity has a certain period of time but instantaneous velocity is the velocity at certain time only. Uniform velocity is velocity which has constant magnitude and constant direction. 
the formula is ds dt equal to constant. So when a car travels at uniform velocity, means it does not accelerate or doesn't change direction. Okay? Acceleration equal to zero. For example, if you want to calculate the average velocity or instantaneous velocity from the displacement time graph, here is the method. To calculate the average velocity from location B to location E, VBE, is equal to delta S over delta T. So delta S is the total displacement from point B to point E. And delta T is the total time taken from T1 to T2. So average velocity has a certain period of time huh? with two time points from T1 to T2. And then for instantaneous velocity, it is the velocity at only certain location, such as velocity at certain point C or velocity at certain time T. So instantaneous velocity is the ds over dt, which is the gradient of the graph at point C only. Average acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, and uniform acceleration. So what are the differences? So they are similar to the velocity. Average acceleration is the change of velocity over total time taken. Formula is V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1 or delta V over delta T. So average acceleration also consider a certain time period from T1 to T2. Okay, and it also takes the final velocity V2 minus the initial velocity V1. The change of velocity. Whereas the instantaneous acceleration is the acceleration at certain time or certain location only. Only has one time point, acceleration at certain time t or acceleration at certain point a. The formula is dv over dt. So acceleration can be instantaneous acceleration can be calculated from the gradient at the point of velocity time graph. So the differences between average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration is average acceleration has a certain time period from T1 to T2 but instantaneous acceleration is the acceleration at only certain time. Uniform acceleration is the acceleration with constant magnitude and constant direction. So dv dt equal to constant. Now let's talk about linear motion graphs. There are three types of linear motion graphs which are the displacement time graph, velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. For a stationary object, the displacement graph is constant. Velocity is zero because not moving, acceleration zero. For this example, the, this duct has displacement of positive 10 meter. Displacement of positive 10 meter and it is constant meaning that the duct is 10 meter in front of the origin. And the displacement graph is constant meaning that the duct is stationary at 10 meter point, not moving. Velocity zero, not moving. Moving object with constant velocity. So let's see the duct. The duct is moving to the right at constant velocity. It moves from the origin to the 50 meter location. So the displacement graph increases from zero to 50 meter. The gradient is constant. The gradient of displacement graph is actually the velocity. So velocity is constant, so the gradient is constant. 
It moved from 0 to 50 meter in front of origin. Velocity is constant. Velocity is 10 meter per second. Velocity constant because the duct is moving at constant velocity. Velocity is constant, horizontal, because no acceleration, no speeding up or no slowing down. Acceleration is zero. Moving object with acceleration. The duck is accelerating to the right. See? The duck become faster and faster, become faster and faster to the right. The duck move from origin to 0 to 25 meter. So the displacement graph increases from 0 to 25 meter. And the displacement graph is curving upward because the velocity increases. The gradient of displacement graph is the velocity. Velocity increases, so the gradient of displacement graph also increases. Acceleration. Velocity from 0 increases to 10. Velocity increases with acceleration. Become faster and faster. Velocity increases. There is an acceleration. Moving object with deceleration. See the duck. The duck is slowing down. The duck is slowing down. It is slowing down. It still moves from 0 to 25 meter. So the displacement graph still increase from 0 to 35 meter because the duck still moving to the right from 0 to 25 meter. However, the displacement graph is curving downward. Okay, what does it mean by curving downward? Yeah, it means that the gradient of the graph decreases. The gradient of the graph decreases to zero. The gradient of displacement graph is the velocity. Velocity decreases because of deceleration slowing down. The velocity decreases from 10 until the velocity zero. Velocity zero means it stops at 25 meters. Velocity stop. So velocity decreases. So the displacement graph as the gradient decreases gradient decreases okay, velocity decreases deceleration there is a negative acceleration slowing down velocity decreases becomes zero so from the four types of linear motion which are the stationary object constant velocity acceleration and deceleration we can learn a few things. First, displacement time graph. A displacement time graph, we can calculate the velocity from the gradient of the graph. The gradient of displacement time graph is actually the velocity. So velocity is equal to ds over dt. The grade velocity is the gradient of displacement time graph. Here we have two trolleys. Again, this is a displacement time graph. Trolley A has a bigger gradient, trolley B has a smaller gradient. So what is the difference? Ah, trolley A, which has a bigger gradient, moves faster. But trolley B, has a, which has a smaller gradient, moves slower. Let's see again. Trolley A is moving very fast, but trolley B is moving very slow. Okay. So we can see, we can say that a bigger gradient of displacement graph means it has higher velocity and moving faster. A smaller gradient in the displacement time graph means it has lower velocity and moving slower. You see? Trolley A is moving faster than Trolley B because Trolley A has bigger gradient than Trolley B. In other words, we can say that for same time of 2 seconds, Trolley A has reached 3 meter but Trolley B only reached 1 meter. 
So trolley A is moving faster than trolley B. The bigger gradient means higher velocity. Velocity time graph. From velocity time graph, the gradient of velocity time graph is the acceleration. Okay? Gradient of velocity time graph is the acceleration. So the formula for acceleration is dv over dt or v minus u over t. So acceleration is the gradient of velocity time graph. Another thing is the area under velocity time graph is the displacement. Okay, we can calculate displacement from the area under velocity time graph. So we have learned a few very important keynotes. The gradient of displacement time graph is the velocity, but the gradient of velocity time graph is the acceleration. Another thing is the area under velocity time graph is the displacement. For the displacement graph, the area means nothing. Okay, so these are the three most important things you must know.